great time of praise and worship today. Amen. Yeah, give the Lord a hand for that. And his victory is our victory. Amen. And so we praise the Lord for him. And I, I want to go ahead and let our kids know this is time for our, our children's church. So kids in kindergarten, first or second grade, you may be dismissed and go with Miss Carrie in the back and have a great time there. And we'll see you uh, as soon as this time is over with. And you'll have a great time upstairs. Amen. Today I want to continue on with the series of messages of making church the place to be. And what I want to look at today basically is the idea of what is required of us. You know, a lot of times, as I shared in the first service this morning, a lot of times what we do in the church is we kind of promoted a lifestyle of the church to where things can't be expected of people. That, well, it's, it's, what do you expect? We're volunteers, we're this, we're that. You can't expect much from us, but my friends, listen to me. There are some things that God requires of us, not for our salvation, amen, because our salvation is free and our salvation is maintained by Him, as we talked about last week, that we don't control our salvation, praise God, because if it did, I would lose it instantly, amen? But praise be to God, He is the one that controls our salvation, Amen? But what we're talking about, though, is in order to make the church the place to be, there are some things that are required of us to do, to be able to get that message to the lost world about the saving grace of Jesus Christ. There are things that, that we're to do. There are some things that are required of us to make the church the place to be. And this will be the place to be, my friends, when we do what's required of us as believers. When we begin to do what's required of us. Now, I want to encourage you and inform you that today I'm going to be reading this text of Scripture. But uh, this is basically the first part of a two-part sermon. And I just didn't think you would have the endurance to want to stay here till about 2 o'clock today listening to both sermons. So what I'm going to do is I've, I've split this one and you'll hear about today uh, what's required of us. Next week we're going to continue in the book of Romans chapter 12. We're going to be looking at our behavior as Christians. So today we're going to be looking at what is required of us. I want you to take your Bibles. Turn to the book of Romans, chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And so please stand as, as once you find it. Let's go ahead, if you're able to, please stand in honor of reading God's Word. I want you at home to uh, find it, Romans 12, 1 and 2, and join us uh, in our reading here this morning. The Bible says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice wholly acceptable to, to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove that way that is good and acceptable and perfect will of God. God, we thank you for today. Thank you for the sweet time of praise and worship that we've experienced. And now, Father, as we continue on with your word, I pray that your spirit would continue to strive in us and, Father, reveal truth to us. I pray for everyone here, and I pray for those at home watching on the live stream, Father, that you would just open our minds and hearts to you. And Father, I pray as always that the words I'm about to say, they'll not be my words at all, but God, these will be your words. This is not my message that I planned, but Father, it's the message that you laid on my heart. And that Father, that we could see the response from your people here and at home would be as you desire for it to be. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. Please go ahead and be seated. Today we're going, again, to be looking at the idea of making this the place to be. What is required of us to make church the place to be? And quite frankly, we see here in the very first part of this verse. Now, again, all of you, I know, know this verse really well. And I believe God has encouraged me over the last couple of weeks to uh, inspire me to look at the very common verses that we know so well. And I think it's almost that we now pass over them because we know them so much. But every scripture has a depth to it and, a, and a, a heartfelt meaning to it. And so today, that's what I want to be able to look at, this very uh, familiar passage of scripture, that what is required of us to make church the place to be is when we begin to, as Christians, to be a living sacrifice. Now, this is not a dead thing. This is not something that he wants us to die for him. Now, we are to die to self, Amen. The Bible tells us all the time, die to self, die to self, die to self. But can I tell you that God wants us to live for him today here in this world? God desires and longs for his people to live for him. There's not one of us in here today that is required to die at our service. Amen? 
Not one of you had to sneak in here, worry about coming in, hoping no one found out where you were going, and you had to sneak into this building and be afraid this whole time that if somebody discovers where you are and what's going on, that they will rush in here and they will arrest us and they will kill us. Not one of us has to worry about that. Amen? Can I tell you today, the church in America is not being persecuted. We're being inconvenienced. We're having things thrown out at us. But folks, we're not really... There are people... Do you realize there are people in our world that are worried about when they gather together? Do you realize that when they gather together, they are taking their lives in their own hands, that they would die, they have to die for Jesus? But Jesus is not here today calling for you or I to die for him. We're to die to ourselves and make ourselves then a living sacrifice going out and living for Jesus. Now, what does that mean? The first thing is that he wants us to yield ourselves. He wants us to say, it's not about me anymore. So in our lives, right here, right now, God is wanting us in this service and you at home to say, God, my life is not about me anymore. My life is all about you, God. Everything about me is yours. I yield myself over to you that I now want you to take over everything about me. So we do it, and when we yield ourselves, he wants us to do it completely. He doesn't want us to do it partially. Uh, You know, we all, we we used to sing, uh, you talk about the old hymns, we used to say, I surrender all. You remember singing, I surrender all? You remember that? And that's usually, the only time we ever sang that was every now and then at an invitation. But it was, I surrender all, but I believe in our Americans today that many of us would want to sing, I surrender some. I surrender a peace, but I, I don't want to surrender all. I think somehow, again, in the modern church, we've decided that our life is this one big thing. And you remember the old game Trivial Pursuit years ago? Do y'all remember Trivial Pursuit? And you got to ask these questions. You had this little disc, and inside of it had little wedges. And you, every time you got that category right, you filled up with a wedge in your little prize. And you got all your wedges in, and you, got, and you won the game. Well, I think that's kind of what we've decided to do sometimes in the church, that we don't want our life to be one big circle. We want it to be circled with little wedges in there. And so what we're able to do by categorizing our life is say, well, I will, I I, I surrender you my life on Sunday. I, I got my church life. Now, God, that one you can have. But then over here, I've got my work life. Now, God, you understand the world of business. You understand the world that I'm living in. I can't fully surrender everything over to you there. Now, you also know my family. Now, God, I'm going to try the best I can to to yield myself and be a living sacrifice and surrender all of that, my family life, to you. Now, of course, I got my recreation life, and God, you know that. That's really, I'm just here to have fun, and we live our life in a separate way, and I don't really want my, my church life to... Uh, to interfere with my social life and I don't want my social life to interfere with my church life so I've got to separate that and then over here I got my private life that's my personal thing now God I, you you know that there are some things that I, I deal with and God I'm just going to come over here and I'm going to neatly package this up so I don't want to yield everything over to you God I'll yield part but my friend can I share with you today God does not want our life divided in segments he wants us to have one life well, and I am going to be, I'm going to surrender my life on Sunday. I'm going to surrender my life on Monday. I'm going to surrender my life on Tuesday. I'm going to do it all the way, even through, listen, even through Saturday. I am going to surrender my Saturday life to you, God. So he says, I want you to be a living sacrifice, yielding ourselves completely, and then also voluntarily. God does not want to force any of us into this. Amen. He doesn't want us to feel like I have to do anything for him. It's not because I owe him and I, oh, I have to do it. I have to be. Can I tell you that you you don't have to do anything for God? Because if you're saved, your salvation is intact. Amen? Let me say that again. If you are saved, your salvation is intact. God does not want us to feel forced or doing anything out of obligation. He wants us to do it because we love Him. God, I surrender my all to You. God, I voluntarily give it. I am not coerced in any way, but God, it is for You. It is because of the way I feel for You. It's voluntarily. And then not only is it voluntary by us choosing to get to yield or not, but it's also daily. This is, again, not a Sunday morning thing. 
This surrender is not just for Sunday morning in church. This living sacrifice is not only while you're doing the live stream or while we're sitting in here together. It is that we do it on a daily basis knowing that I must surrender myself to Him. That's why I encourage you every day that we are to have a quiet time just between you and God because it is at that time that you are again surrendering yourself over to Him again. God, I wake up in the morning, I get into your word, I have time of prayer. God, I let you lead me. Or God, before I go to bed, I let you lead me for the next day. And, and whenever it is that God, that daily decision to, for me to surrender myself to you. So it's yielding ourselves. But it's also then to be a living sacrifice is saying it's his will for our will. It's no longer my will. I think we've heard another great individual say that one time, did we not? From the garden, he says, God, if this cup pass from me, then let it be. But not my will, but your will. This is what this daily living sacrifice is, is that it will be our, his will is now going to take the place of my will. So I'm not going to be a living sacrifice, not when I feel like it. Only if I feel like it. Boy, I just don't feel it today, preacher. I just, I, I, you know, there's stuff going on today. And surely, surely God understands if I don't yield today. Surely he will. Because I just, I'm not feeling it. I don't want to commit to anything because what if I don't feel like it? What if I wake up in the morning and I don't feel like it? Listen, do you know a living sacrifice, you do it regardless of how you feel. I, I shared in the first service, and I, I, I kind of, think I may have shocked them just a little bit but I, I shout them even as a pastor do you know there are days that I don't feel like it there are days I wake up and I'm going man I really don't want to go in today there's a lot happening and I'm tired but do you realize that we all have to do it whether we're, we're a living sacrifice when I leave out of here today I don't care how we feel God still wants us to live for him because it's his will, not mine, just not when I'm happy. Say, okay, God, today, you know what, God, I feel like it today. So, okay, yeah, you're lucky you got me today. Now, you better use me today because you may not have me tomorrow. Because I may not feel like it tomorrow. You better get it while I feel good. My friend, that's not living sacrifice. But not only when I feel like it, but how I like it. How I like it. This is, again, sometimes where I find myself, and this is... Sometimes I, I want to be a living sacrifice. Man, I really do want to do what God's wanting, but I really don't want to do this. What if I could do this instead, God? This is, this is a, a good thing. So let me do this over here. Man, I remember, and many of you, if you've heard my testimony, when God was calling me into the full-time ministry, and you know that I was a teacher and a coach, and man, I loved coaching. I love it. I was even talking to John about it today in my office. I love, I, I still love coaching. And I love doing what I was doing and teaching. And so here's what would happen. God would say, Harold, I, I want you to surrender your life. I want you to be a li living sacrifice. But I want you to be a living sacrifice while being a pastor of a church. Hmm. Hmm. Well, God... And I did this for three years. I asked my wife, well, God, I understand that. I see what you're, I kind of get what you're pointing at. Pretty good deal. But God, I feel like really, man, I, I, I'm a coach and I'm a teacher. I, I, I'm volunteering as a youth pastor in the church. And God, could you imagine, do you know over the, seven, the 17 years that I've been doing this, God, don't you know the young lives that I've impacted? Woo, it's good. And God, don't you know how many more young lives I could impact by being a teacher and a coach? And boy, God, I, I want to surrender. I want to be a living sacrifice to you. But I really don't know that this is the way the best so God what I want to do is I want to serve you but I want to I want to do it over here it finally got to a point where my wife and, and because it was not, it was a noble thing listen teachers and coaches noble profession amen 
Uh, my heart is still there for teachers. My heart is still there for education. My heart is still there for athletics. My heart is still there. I love the idea of it. It is a noble profession. It is a good profession. It is something that affects young people's lives in a tremendous way. It was good. But it wasn't His will. And in that I would begin to get really... uh, Man, I was struggling in my life. And I remember standing in the kitchen of our little trailer. And my wife, God bless her, finally just looked at me and said, Harold, why don't you do what God's wanting you to do? Because she knew my heart was miserable. She knew I was struggling. But oh, this was good. But can I tell you, good is not always right. Amen? Amen? Good stuff is not always the right stuff because it's not the way God wants you to do it. God God used me, I pray, in positive ways as a teacher and a coach, but He wanted me to be a pastor. Why? I don't know. But He wanted me to be a pastor. That was a good profession, but this wasn't where He wanted me. So He wanted me here. So good is not always right. Christopher Shaw wrote this. Not all we consider good is consistent with the righteousness of God. So, folks, to be a living sacrifice, we don't get to choose how we do it. We do what God is leading us to do. It has to be acceptable to Him. Look what it says. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, what? Acceptable. The way He wants it. Not the way you choose to get it. But it has to be acceptable to Him. We look and we see in the Old Testament, we we see uh, the way... Uh, that, that God wants things to be acceptable. We look in the Old Testament, we look in the book of Genesis, we see Cain and Abel, and God required a sacrifice from them. And Cain gave a sacrifice. As a matter of fact, I believe it was probably a great sacrifice. One that he was excited about giving. And it was one that was laid out, and in a worldly sense, we'd all been going... Great job, Cain. Boy, you are a godly person. But you see, what happened was God said, Cain, that's not the sacrifice I wanted from you. Oh, it's a good, but it's not the one I wanted. So my friends, so often in our lives, if we want to, we want to be a living sacrifice, we want to yield maybe a little bit, or we want to do it the way we want to do it. But it has to be acceptable by Him. And the third part of that, it has to be reasonable. It has to be a reasonable sacrifice. In view of all that He's done, in view that all that Jesus did for me, I can only give him myself. In view of all that he's done, and my friend, we just sang about victory. We've sang about that amazing grace. We sang about all of these things in our praise and worship time. Oh my goodness, hasn't God been amazing to us? He gave us that amazing grace. He gave us victory. And now we can sing about him. We love him. And listen, my friends, he has blessed us beyond anything within our ability to even imagine God has blessed us. And because of that, he says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God. You know what he's saying there is as a result of the mercies of all that God has done for you, this is reasonable for you and for me and for those who have received him in our lives. It is reasonable for us to live, be a living sacrifice. That's reasonable. In the light of all he's done, what more could I do? He has been amazing to me. He has blessed me. Man, it reminds me of a, of a story of a little boy that I shared in the first service. A little boy who, who was born and his feet were all crooked and, 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 and in awkward positions. And he, as he grew, they didn't get any better. And, and he struggled and he struggled. And he couldn't walk. Until one day, one day a, a good friend of theirs who was 
had quite a bit of money and he, he finally got a heart for this boy and he said, you know what? He said, I have a friend that's a doctor and I think I can get this, get your son in if you'll let me take him and we'll take him to the hospital. We'll let, let my friend doctor look over at him and, and see what he can do. The doctor looked at him and he said, yeah. He said, uh, I, I think we can correct this. I, I really think we can do it. It's going to take some time. It's going to take a big surgery, but I'll do the surgery. And I then and we'll, I'll help him through the rehab and all this stuff. But I think we can get we can correct this. It's going to be difficult, but we can do it. So of course they went in. They had the surgery. Surgery was a success. Physical therapy was a success. The boy was growing, and eventually the boy got to where he could walk. He got out of the hospital, and and he could actually walk some. And so the the parents as they were visiting with him said, "Well, hey, what do you, what do you think about the hospital? Wasn't that hospital just pretty cool?" He said, "Yeah, it was. But man, I like the doctor." He said, well, what do you think about all the modern medicine, all the, the machines that, they, that, that were around you? Wasn't that pretty cool too? He said, yeah, the machines were great. He said, but I really liked the doctor. I said, well, what about the nurses? The nurses were great, were they not? And he said, yeah, the nurses were friendly. They did great things for me, but I really liked the doctor. He said, and they described all these other things that surrounded the boy. And, they, and they, every time he had said, he finally, he'd say, well, I liked all that, but I really liked the doctor. And they said, son, with all the stuff that you had around you, why were you focused on the doctor? And he said, because it's the doctor that made me walk. My friends, we look around everything that we have. We got a great church, amen. We got great technology. We got all this. But you know what all this should be about? I love that. I like the church. I love the church, but I really love Jesus. I love the fellowship with all of you. I look forward to getting to be with you every Sunday and every Wednesday, man. I look forward, and you at home, man. I'd love to be able to visit with you. But I'm telling you what, I love Jesus. Why is it? By, why should our focus be on Jesus and more than each other, more than the building, more than the ministries? You know why? Because it's Jesus that made us whole. Of all that he's done for me, in the light of all that he's done for me, why would I not want to surrender myself to him? He's the one that made me whole. He's the one who made me well. He's the one who sustains my life. So everything should be about him. Giving, you a, giving him a living sacrifice, which is reasonable. Very, very reasonable with all that he's given us. I beg you, brethren, by the mercies of God, in light of the mercies that he's shown you, present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to him, which is your reasonable service. In the last part, very quickly, we see here that he wants us, the other thing he requires of us is to be transformed. To be transformed. Now, you notice here he says, and do not be conformed to this world but be transformed. You know, I, I want to bring something to your attention that, uh, that I really hadn't thought much about until I was planning this message some time back. That when I, I read about do not be conformed to this world, be ye transformed, do you notice that he, he doesn't even say, don't be conformed to this world, but be conformed to me. He doesn't say be conformed to the, not to the world, but be conformed to me. Do you know why he doesn't want us to conform to him? Because what is conforming? Conforming is a, me changing myself to where I fit into that. So if I feel like I can conform, or don't want to conform to the world, all I want to do is conform to, to God, then what I've done is I've now depending on my ability to fit into the church life. I've conformed to the church life, the church idea of service and, and all that. But do you know what, what transforming is? Folks, can I tell you, you can conform yourself, but you can't transform yourself. That's why he says, be not conformed to the world. But then he doesn't say, so rather be conformed to me. Because he doesn't want you to do anything that is on your power and your ability. Because if you can conform to the world, you can, and if you can conform to him, you can conform away from him. But folks, when you are transformed, you are changed completely. What transform basically means is the adjustment of moral and spiritual vision and thinking to the mind of God. That you change, let Him, you allow Him to change everything about you. You're not just changing how you act and, and changing how you 
you, you speak and you talk and all that. He's not doing that. He doesn't want you to conform to good Christian values. He wants you to allow Him to completely transform your life. The Bible tells us in Philippians 2, 5, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Let me change your mind. Let me change everything about you and transform you from that being lost to now being saved. It is adjusting our ways to His. Letting Him do it through us. And by doing it, and I want to wrap up with this, by doing this, He says here that you might prove what is good and acceptable and the perfect will of God. He says, by doing this, by yielding yourselves a living sacrifice, by doing what's required of you, you will then in turn prove God to the world. As a matter of fact, Jesus said this. He prayed for us said that they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us. That the world... Those out there might believe that you sent me. How is the world going to believe in Jesus? By us. Amen? The world is going to believe in Jesus. They're going to believe that God sent him as his only begotten son by us being a living sacrifice holy and acceptable to Him, which should be our very reasonable thing because of all that He's done for me. Man, we sang that. For all that you've done for me, this is amazing, God. This is amazing. And it is only the minimum thing that I should be able to do was to be, present myself a living sacrifice to you. Because I want the world to know that you live. How do I know he lives? Because he lives within me. How will, will the, how will the world know he lives? Because he lives in us. And they see it through us as a living sacrifice. I'd like you to bow your head as we step into this next part of our, our service. Man, and that, this is a time of, of commitment. This is a time of uh, getting back into the praise and worship after we've experienced his word and i want to ask you my friend are you a living sacrifice you can't be a living sacrifice if you've never received jesus into your heart so if you're here today or you're at the at home i want to ask you do you know jesus as your savior do you know jesus as your savior today he gave amazing grace for you the victory is yours if you'll just receive it would you come today Right there where you are, man, just come to the throne, come to the cross, say, God, here I am. I, I surrender my life to you. Forgive me of my sin. God, I need you in my life. God, would you save me? My friends, if you're here, and I'll be here ready to pray with you and visit with you if, if you need me to. If you're at home, please call our, our office, and someone is on, ready now to talk to you, to pray with you. Would you, would you call that today? Maybe you're here or maybe you're at home watching still and you say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but I've not been doing that living sacrifice thing. Man, I've been separating out my life. I've been doing things the way I want it done. I know God is calling me into this. I know God is leading here in my life. And it's been difficult, but I know what I need to do. Would you today surrender your whole life to Him? Say, God, here I am. I want to be that living sacrifice. My friend, would you do that this morning? You at home, call. We'll pray with you. But please settle this today. Because of the amazing things he's done for us, it is only reasonable that we'd be a living sacrifice. First Baptist West, we are his living sacrifice. Father, hear our prayer this morning. As we respond to your call, as we respond to what you've done for us, Lord, we now are going to stand and we're going to sing to you with all that we have. God, we offer you our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand and sing?